Russell Brand is a product of our abandonment of traditional moral values. In his memoirs, he described the fact that his father, who left the family home when he was just six months old, when they later had something of a relationship, if it can be called that, his father introduced him to pornography at a troublingly young age. Among other disturbing stories of sexual overexposure, he revealed that his father bought him a prostitute in Thailand at the age of 16. These are all the symptoms of the cultural revolution of the 1960s when we abandoned our traditional moral and family values, the idea of right and wrong. The maxim once held to be self-evident in our society that fathers have a moral responsibility to their wives and their children is sadly depressingly absent from Russell Brand's childhood and it warrants pity up until the point that it becomes sinister. But looking back, whether he's guilty or not of specific offences is not at this stage the point, is not the discussion for today. That's under investigation and the police will do their thing. But it is no surprise that he behaved the way he did, devoid of a moral compass, of an understanding of right and wrong, or a view of people as individuals, not as commodities. Russell Brand was encouraged and fated by a culture that not only permitted sexual laxity, but thought it was cool and that those who demurred were old-fashioned. Liberal Western institutions, such as the media, specifically Hollywood and television, embody and are proud of the sexual and cultural revolution of the 1960s. And it's why these sorts of cases arise and achieve such prominence. Russell Brand's humour, if you can call it that, and his behaviour are inextricably linked, as I say, whether he's guilty or not, of specific allegations. And it's no surprise that old clips of his crude humour have resurfaced on the internet where he boasts of his disrespectful behaviour towards women and not just towards women. His humour was hailed as revolutionary by the bien passants at Channel 4 and the BBC who endlessly promoted him and anyone who opposed was thought to be a fuddy-duddy. To take issue with his style was to a prude and to be overly moralistic. But as the BBC and Channel 4 rapidly remove his content from their platforms, as they've done today, the cultural and moral vacuum he operated in has been exposed. He, Russell Brand, was the conclusion of the immoral presumptions of the cultural establishment. The fashion of the 1960s was deeply corrosive to society and to norms of decent behaviour. The solution is an understanding of right and wrong, and the Catholic Herald has a wonderful piece online today pointing out Veritatis Splendor, Pope John Paul II's encyclical of uh, 1993, which I would encourage people to look at because it sets out with clarity that there are moral absolutes, and one of those is respect for women, and respect for women and sexual license do not mix. The Judeo-Christian moral tenets ought to hold firm. The value of the commandments as I said, is that people are seen as individuals, not as commodities to be bought and sold. If you love your neighbour as yourself, you do not send BBC drivers to pick up 16-year-olds when you're entering middle age yourself.